What do you say? Hi, everybody. It's Thanksgiving, so we didn't do anything else, but this is what you get. Okay, Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine in three, two, one. This is just a short thing, right? Sure. That a lot of people are just going to delete. Or not download to begin with. All right. And now here's your host, Rish Outfield. And when you begin to feel your own words, stop typing them. And Big Anklevich. Punch the keys, for God's sake! Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Dune Steve. Not yes. audio magazine today. Well, it's still audio, but it's not fiction or magazine. Yeah. This is uh, something that we decided to do because of the holidays, because of Thanksgiving and Halloween and Guy Fawkes Day and Sweeps Month and Salerinon, which is uh, the observance of Salieri, the patron saint of mediocrity. And uh, it's actually my favorite religious holiday. Cool. We were just not able to get together this week, um, and and we just knew that there was one person out there that gives a cra- – oh, wait. There are two people out there, including us. Okay, let me start over. <laughs> Why did we decide to do this? I think it was because of popular demand. Popular <laughs> demand. Folks are clamoring for this thing that we are going to offer today. Oh, okay, it's possible that somebody cares. Mostly I just care. Because there's a lot of things that we do on our show that I don't think other people do on their shows. And one of them is the Doonstief definitions. No, one of them is... Surprising how few people do Doonstief definitions on their shows. I'm sure podcasts will start it up soon. Probably. Because that's one of those podcasts that it really lends itself to. Mm Mm-hmm. But uh, we thought we'd do a very special episode to make an announcement about a broken mirror story event. (laughs) which we haven't had in months and months and months. The year is almost through, and it looked like we weren't going to have one for 2011. But, yeah, due to a lot of squeaky wheeling by me, I think we are going to have one. (laughs) This will have to be the 2011 slash 2012 one, I think, because it's so late in the year that we'll be starting it. Well, the, the stories won't air until 2012, but I'm sure we could do one again if this one works better than the last one. That's true. Or... We enjoy ourselves more than we did the last one, right? Right. Yeah, maybe this can be the new season of the year that we do it in. So far, we've done it in like late spring or so the last couple years. And this spring came around and we just said, oh, too much work. Forget it. Which is kind of the way I just live my life in general, you know. If it's too much work, then I forget it. But yeah, some squeaky wheeling, and there was even some people, some popular demand going on where some folks were saying, oh, I've just started listening to the Dune Steve, and I wanted to do a broken mirror story, and now you're not doing it. You guys suck, and I'll hate you forever, and yeah, we can't let that happen. It makes me feel too bad. Right, I get enough of that at home. (laughs) Right, seriously. But uh, you and I did, independent of one another, already do a broken mirror this year. (laughs) And so you don't have to feel totally worthless, just 80% like I do. Yeah, that sounds about right. Actually, a a side announcement as far as that whole thing goes, Rish and I did do a a, uh, independent broken mirror, not on purpose. It was just Rish had told a story about an experience that he'd had, and it kind of inspired both of us. Uh, Without mentioning it to each other, we decided to write a story that kind of was sort of based on that and so now we have what do you you wrote two right well i incorporated it into my my screenplay also oh oh, okay so that that one won't be part of it then so yeah rish has a short story i have a short story they're based on the same premise of sorts and uh what we thought we would do with these is get them formatted up so that people can buy them and use them on an e-reader so uh, as soon as we can figure that out and get it going. We're going to make those available for folks to pick up. I think generally the way people do it is they charge like 99 cents for the story when it's a short story like that. Hey, Big. Yeah? I'm not sure if you knew this, but I never let anyone read my stories. <laughs> what if they said they were no good? What if they said 
I had no future. I, I just, I don't think I could deal with that kind of rejection. It's okay, because I'm just going to push you down and take it from you. Uh, like prom. S <laughs> That's right. So you don't need to worry about that. We'll, we'll push right through that barrier. But uh, yeah, we're going to uh, put those out there. I'm not sure how long that will take. Maybe it'll take longer than editing the Transformers movie. Oh, jeez. <laughs> But sooner or later, you can watch for that. See, the trick to editing a good Transformers movie is you need so many cuts that you can't tell where characters are in position to one another. And you can't tell who is good and who is bad, who is human, who is a robot. Yeah. I'm, That's the trick. I'm having a hard time making that happen. but I, People can still tell what's going on in it. So I can tell that I'm not done yet. <laughs> well... Let's get done with this recording. Okay, that's probably a good idea. So uh, our point, uh, oh, and now that we're done with that side announcement, is to uh, announce the Broken Mirror Story event. Yes. We start with a premise each year, and we just throw it out there for you, and you can take it and run with it however you want. And then you send in that uh, story that you've written to our submissions, which are closed otherwise, so don't try and send us a regular story, but... Broken Mirror stories are exempt from the closing of the submissions. Yeah, that's right. That, uh, that's all we'll accept for the rest of the year. I, I hadn't even considered that we had closed submissions, and that might be confusing. <laughs> so, Rish has our premise for this year. Yeah, in the past, you and I have come up with, I think, three premises each, and then we've swapped them while we were recording. But this year, it was, again, just a lot of work. And I was talking to you on the phone and I said, oh, hey, I had an idea. What about this? And you said, good enough. <laughs> is, is that accurate? I said, that'll do, pig. So the premise that I think we settled on is someone arrives in town. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. <laughs> It was, uh, a child is proclaimed, wait. Yes, uh, it may be time for us to hang up our hats, folks. <laughs> Actually, what I believe it was, and you can correct me if it doesn't sound right, is a phone rings in the night. The person on the other end only says one word, but that is enough. Bum, Does that sound right? Bum, bum. Yeah, that sounds pretty much exactly it. And I like how you phrased it ambiguously enough that uh, you can take your character and make it a man, a woman, a midget, a... You know, there there are dwarf women. True. Sometimes it's hard to tell because of the beards. <laughs> but yeah, you could make your character a Grishnard. Do Grishnards have phones? The the very, very wealthy ones, the the one percent. Ah, the one percent, yes. They control the the majority of the uh, world's phones. It's just it's not fair even in uh Weffervain. That's right. Okay, so if you don't know what a broken mirror what are how this works, you need to write a short story and, and there's no length limit. If you really want to write a five hundred word story, I'll mock you, but we'll still read it. With that premise. And you don't have to include, you know, but it, but was, it enough. was enough. In the story, uh, just as long as we can get that from reading the story. You know what I mean? Don't take a previous story that you've already written and modify it so that it sort of becomes relevant to our, our premise. The fun is just to see what people come up with with that push-off point. Right. And that's the whole point. And we've talked endlessly about writing on our show. And uh, do it again. One of the things that we always say is you want to be a better writer, you got to practice. Well, here's something to practice with. So the point is to write a new story. What are we doing for our dates? Are we doing the month of December or are we going to give it? I figured to walk on the beach a little holding hand, <laughs> light petting. <laughs> oh, good. At least the light petting's involved because otherwise I ain't paying. How about if we say 112 12? Does that sound okay? Is the ending date? Is the the deadline, yeah. Or, or do you think that's too late? No, that's good. I was going to suggest uh, halfway through January as well, just because December tends to be a busy month for lots of people, so they may not be able to put in as much time as they would like. So giving them a couple extra weeks afterwards would help. And, you know, it may be that, uh, that that's too much time, but I'd rather err on the side of generosity than miserliness. 
Right. Because it, it's the holidays. It'll give them a chance to go through and uh, edit out the typos. I, I appreciate it when people edit out the typos. Okay, so there is our date. The 12th of January, 2012, is when you must submit your story to the Doonstief by... And yeah, what happens is those stories all come in. We uh, send them out to all the slush readers and the slush readers give them a score from one to 10. And then we also read them and then we give everybody gives it a score. We average the scores out and the top score getters will be done on the show. We're not sure how many of those will do. Uh, There have been times we've done as many as six stories from uh, the event. Last time, I think we did three or four There'll be three or four probably this time around that will be made into episodes of the Dune Steve. One other thing is uh, we will take all those stories once the uh, contest is done and has been judged and we will post them all on the website. That is uh, a requirement, by the way. If you're going to enter your story, uh, it will be published on our site. So keep that in mind. We, we post them all so everyone will get the chance to have the same experience as us uh, slush readers did where they can read each story and see all the different ways that the many entrants took that idea and ran with it. So that's that's one of the funnest parts of the uh, the whole event. So we, we like to make sure everybody gets that chance. And hey, listen, if you're a, a, a young writer or an inexperienced writer and you're worried that it's not worth doing it because you're going to be competing with Tim Pratt and folks like that, uh, first of all, Tim Pratt's way too good for this show. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, go over to Journey Into if you want Tim Pratt. But the thing that I'm trying to say is all of the names are removed from the the entries. So we don't even know. I won't even know which story Big wrote when I score it. So you have just as much of a chance as a... As Stephen King. Well, Okay. <laughs> I guess that's true. I was thinking more along the lines of, of Josh Roseman or oh, somebody like oh, that. But okay. yeah, you know what? The sky is the limit. Anybody can uh, participate in this and it's all anonymous and it'll be interesting to see how people take this premise and go with it. What, what is that sound? Was that your stomach? <laughs> okay, we need to stop recording because you are obviously literally starving. <laughs> there was a large truck that drove by, actually. I'm surprised you could hear it. Okay, so one more time. Uh, a phone rings in the middle of the night. The person on the other end only says one word, but it is enough. Did that sound more or less exactly the way? More or less exactly. More, that sound more or less exact. Okay. So that's the premise. Run with it. Right. I do look forward to people participating in this. And if it's fun, like I said, we'll do it again. We sort of declined to do a uh, an October Scary Story event this year because last year was not fun. More specifically, nobody cared last year. <laughs> nobody entered that, really. And I know somebody, at least one person, really wanted an October Scary Story event this year. So... For the children, send us a story to this broken mirror thing. Uh, All right, folks. Have fun, and uh, I guess we'll see you in December. Yes, enjoy your holidays, and we'll be back with a new episode somewhat soon. (laughs) There you go. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. See ya. Bye. If you'd like to submit your story to the Dune Steve, send it to submissions at dunesteve.com. The Dune Steve is released under a Creative Commons Attribution No Deviations License. Derivation. Okay. The Dune Steve is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Deriv. Derivatives. Non Commercial No Dera. Deri- Why do I have der- derivatives? No derivatives license, so you can share the show with whomever you'd like, but you cannot change for it or alter. You cannot change for it? Charge. I guess I'm dumb. I can't read it. I'm tired. The Dunstorf is released under a Creative Commons attribution. Okay. Take two. Oh, for the love of God. (sighs) 
the the doorbell rang before the phone rang before <laughs> the child i'm trying to save my joke until the ringing stops oh shoot the baby just came in too oh okay i gotta close the door sorry yeah that's a good Hold idea <laughs> that's why we don't record during the day usually the day <laughs> yes yes you're the man now dog Day. Bark, bark, wagtail. Good boy. Good boy.